A huge week for the liberal lapdog media. Their new savior, Joe Biden, has finally been anointed and is sworn in as president. And the coverage has been nothing short of euphoric. Take a look. Those lights that are that are just shooting out from the Lincoln Memorial uh, along the reflecting pool, it, I look, it's like almost extensions of Joe Biden's arms embracing America. This is new America, and I hope that I hope new America wins the war. The 46th president of the United States putting his soul into his first address. He gave the kind of inaugural address our presidents used to give. The inauguration was a joyful occasion. Like I do at most happy things, I cried a lot. We haven't had a love story in the White House in four years. We saw the steely determination and compassion of President Joe Biden. There was not one part of that that wasn't just medicine in the wound. <laughs> that fawning is so over the top that the partisan press is getting called out by their own biased colleagues. A liberal Washington Post columnist says the Biden TV coverage is embarrassingly complimentary at times. And Politico is calling on the media to tone down the Biden adulation. Now, despite the abundance of praise, the White House is planning to shield the new president from the press. Axios is calling it the Biden Protection Plan. His staff wants to limit when and where he can speak freely and off the cuff. Maybe moments like this are why. Far higher than basically where the U.S. is right now. When I announced it, you all said it's not possible. Come on, give me a break, man. Come on, you guys. That's a good start. <laughs> hey, Dagan, so what do you think motivates the press, or at least some members of the press, to tell the rest of the bootlickers, hey, guys, you might want to knock it off. It's making us all look bad. Uh, because th those few people actually have some self-awareness. Uh, and recognize embarrassment when they see it. These press performances actually were not as bad as I thought they would be. They were worse. We were chug-a-lugging <laughs> a truly vile cocktail of arrogance and obsequiousness all week. The reactions on Inauguration Day were like a teary teenager who just won the, you know, cantaloupe patch crown. Oh! You know. But the, the issue... <laughs> the, the bigger, the bigger issue is, and I, I follow Green, Glenn Greenwald really closely, the journalist on Twitter. He said, "I've never seen groupthink among the media this high in my life." completely incurious to report on Washington, D.C. being a militarized zone when you couldn't even discuss it. It was a taboo subject, his words, last summer, when people were talking about the idea of using the military to quell the violence over the summer. Two editors got fired over publishing a Tom Cotton idea piece in The New York Times. Or you, how about some reporting on this domestic war on terrorism that the Biden administration has launched essentially to target people who do not agree with the liberal ideology? Yeah. They're going after conservatives across the country. No journalist no, wearing a microphone and makeup wants to talk about that. Yeah, they support it. That's this. It's a silent war. One, I don't want to name check anybody, but there are people in hard news divisions in these other networks that are, you know, calling the president or the former president a pathetic, uh, you know, piece of garbage and then pivoting 180 degrees and lavishing praise on this new guy. Don't you think that's what destroys the credibility of the press? Well, I, I'm, I'm impressed by your restraint and not calling out people, because I think there are people who are guilty of what you just said, Jesse. So hats off to you. <laughs> a, a rare moment of restraint from Mr. Waters. But I, I got to say, <laughs> Thank I, you, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm an outlier here because I think this is not about media bias. I think, to the contrary, I think this is about the press accurately reporting on Joe Biden's uplifting message of unity in his inaugural address and what we've seen since from the Biden White House. I mean, the reality is this is very different than what we've been hearing from the White House, from the bully pulpit for the last four years. This is not about division. This is not about rancor. It's not about anger. Uh, and I think a lot of people just view it as refreshing. 
you know, one way to get new good coverage, uh, you know, right from the start, don't say that you had the largest inaugural crowd ever and know that it's not truth. I'll give you another way to get good press. Reinstate the daily press briefing, and which we've seen from Jen Psaki. People love it. It gets attention. This is what Americans voted for. They voted for a return to normalcy. They want to be able to know that the president and his staff and the administration are right there. They can go and they can understand what's going on. So right now, when I look at the numbers I got in front of me, it says here Biden has a 58 percent approval rating in the Pew poll. The Fox poll has 55 percent support him or are willing to give him a chance and we'll be watching. So the upbeat coverage, I think it's a, it, it reflects a country that's just saying, wow, you know what, we've come out of a dark moment and uh, attacks on the Capitol. And this guy's talking about healing people and getting government to work for the people. That's we're on the right track. Well, I think if I were a Democrat, I'd get a 50 percent approval rating, too, no matter what I did. Greg, what do you think about the coverage so far? And what do you think about the Biden protection plan? Well, first of all, um, what Juan is talking about and what the media are talking about, the most important thing to them is tone and not body bags, right? So Juan says, you know what, maybe if you wanted good press, you shouldn't have been bragging about your, your, your uh, crowd size. And they go, okay, wow, so that's the reason why he's been reviled for four years. It's about his personality and his tone. Meanwhile, so you have a media that is embracing a warmonger. But they reviled the peacenik, which is Trump. Trump is a pacifist because he just he's greedy about blood and treasure. So he didn't want any wars. But you see this progressive liberal press fawning over a warmonger who's just sent troops to Syria. So the war machine is back in business. And what is this? It, 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 it begs the comparison. You're seeing the, the next phase in media rep reportage, the next phase where the media now writes about the media under Trump as though they're looking back at a <laughs> war like they were the war correspondents who were up all night not because soldiers were dying but because of the tweets oh the tweets and and Trump lying about his crowd size thank God he's gone I'd much rather have the warmonger now despite all of the fawning praise for Joe Biden. Juan left out a poll, I think it was Rasmussen, that showed that his ratings are less than Trump at this time in 2017. He's under 50. So his approval rating, Biden's approval rating, should be about 80 to 90 percent given the coverage. But that's not the case. It's actually under 50 percent. Why is that? Well, you cannot unify a country when you smear half a country as domestic terrorists or racists and talk about a white supremacy movement in which you cannot even identify who the leaders are. And then what happens is you have an American public who now realize that this uplifting message is a freaking lie. He is a woke wolf in centrist clothing, right? They see that his, they saw mm. his divisiveness emerge. They saw his centri centrism evaporate. So that's why... There's a contrast between how America is responding to Joe as opposed to the media versus Trump. Trump understood his audience and said, screw you, media. Biden's doing the complete reverse. He's saying, screw you, America, with the pipeline, with Syria, and he's doing exactly what the media wants. That's the reversal that is going to really, really hurt the Democratic Party. And you know whose approval rating is less than 50 percent is the media. It's at an all-time low. It's the lowest it's ever been. Less than half the American people trust the traditional media. And it's really important to point that out. When in Juan, I know you're touting the press briefings back to some sort of normal. Well, perhaps that's the case when the questions today, because I sat right here covering that press briefing, there were questions like, where's Biden going to go to church on Sundays? What's the color scheme of Air Force <laughs> One going to be? Has he chosen? <laughs> It yet. There were soldiers sleeping overnight on the floor of a parking garage in frigid temperatures. There was not a single question about that in that press briefing room. That's a problem. And I mean, I think the press would rather ask questions to the president like they did with Donald Trump than yeah. talk to his mouthpiece. Well, I don't know why not. Yeah. Up next, out.